Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. And we welcome you and uh, ask you to just come on into the classroom and join us today. We've got a seat saved on the front row for you, real close, so I can check you out and, and, and see if you're, you're getting this all right. Uh, the purpose of Faith School is so that our uh, spirit will be fed, our faith will grow stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers. Uh, this is something that you're not just born knowing, and even though you're born again, uh, you've been made uh, in the likeness and image of God an overcomer, but you also have to learn how to respond to things and, and what to believe and what to say and what to do. Uh, faith is developed. It must be fed and developed. And you do learn how to be uh, uh, an overcomer. You learn how to deal with things, how to deal with problems and issues, how to deal with disappointments. And uh, <clears throat> even though you don't always know the answers and the details, you do know if you're a child of God, you should know this, the correct response to any situation is trust God. <laughs> Believe God. Look to Him. Faith is the correct response. So uh, let's pray and, and let's believe together today that we'll have exactly uh, come out what the Lord wants to come out. Father, we ask you, and agree, all of us agree, the, the faith school class all over the world, we agree together as touching this, asking you for the anointing, asking you for the quickening of your spirit, asking you for utterance, uh, supernatural ability, uh, the Holy Spirit inspired words and flow that causes us to be enlightened and to understand and know, that causes us to be built up and, and fed in our spirits until we become strong and are able to overcome anything and everything that's not uh, from you and not right in our lives. And we say, Lord, to you uh, be all the glory for every victory, every triumph. We'll give you the praise and we will give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Turn with me, please, in our great textbook, the Bible, to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. Hebrews 10, 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them uh, who draw back unto perdition or destruction, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Why don't you say that out loud, class? We are not. We are not. Of them who draw back, them who draw back. Unto, destruction. unto destruction. We are of those, are of those who, believe who believe to the saving of the soul. The of the soul. We're believers. It's a choice. Uh, in the 11th chapter, verse 1, he says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. A good report. Let me read this to you from some other translations. Um, the NIV says this, talking about faith, is what the ancients were commended for. They were commended for their faith. The Amplified says, For by faith the men of old had divine testimony born to them, and obtained a good report. Divine testimony. Who testified about their faith? God. And in fact, this, uh, the rest of this chapter is that very thing. God testifying and had it preserved so that you and I could read it and talk about it and even have me preach on it today and of all the other manifestations of this, how God approved of every one of these individuals that he named. He names Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham and Sarah and, and on and on. 
these individuals have God's approval. He approves and commends what? Their faith is what caused them to be approved. Um, the BBE says it that way, uh, basic English, English, for by it, by faith, our fathers had God's approval. Had God's approval. Um, if you skip down to verse 39, he says this again. All these having obtained a good report through faith. That's Hebrews 11, 39. He starts off with it, this idea in verse 2 and finishes with it in verse 39. So everything that happens between verse 2 and verse 39 is God's uh, having approved all these individuals because of their faith. Uh, the Amplified says in verse 39, all of these, uh, they won divine approval by means of their faith. Now he goes on to talk about they didn't get everything uh, during their lifetime. They were, uh, God had had them waiting for us. <laughs> and, uh, but the victories and miracles that they did see in their lifetime came by means of their faith in God, and God has approved of that. Back up to verse uh, 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, we're going to see an application of that um, just a couple of verses later. Well, we'll see. Uh, eventually, I believe we'll get to it. Things, the worlds were framed. This, this is our planet, all the planets in our solar system, all the other planets throughout the known universe and the unknown. They were uh, framed by the Word of God. Now, this is, I know everybody doesn't believe this, but I'm glad I do. It's a choice that we believe the Genesis account, that God spoke, light be. He spoke these things into existence and the worlds were framed by the Word of God. And it tells you that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now it's taken many centuries and men and women learning a little bit, you know, every generation until now, people have some concept of that. That even though this desk here is solid and I can put my hand on it, actually it's comprised of atoms. And there's a lot of space between it. And it's made up of things you can't see. And actually there's beginning to be an understanding that matter is another form of energy. And that matter can go from matter to energy and energy to matter, from seen to unseen, unseen to seen. That was been, that's been completely unknown. But those who study physics now and are considered experts are putting forth uh, theories and understandings that begin to show this, things that are seen. <laughs> are made of things that don't appear. Sometimes you'll hear people say, well, you know, God made all of this out of nothing. The Bible didn't say that. He made it out of something, things you can't see. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's nothing. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You know, your, your mind, for instance, not your brain, not the physical organ of your brain. Your brain's not your mind. Your mind is not physical. And you'd be foolish to say, well, if I can't see it and put my hand on it and touch it, I don't, I, I don't believe it exists. Well, then you don't believe you have a mind. Well, it's, it's, no, it's the brain. No, the brain's not the mind. The brain's the physical organ the mind functions through and expresses itself through. The truth is, you're a spirit. You're not just a body. You're a spirit. You have a mind. 
you live in a body. And even when this body dies, your spirit goes on. Your spirit's made of things you can't see. God himself is spirit. He's the father of spirits. Now we'll begin to see why I'm talking about this in just a few moments. We'll, or, or maybe days. We'll see how long it takes us. <laughs> but uh, the Bible said, verse 4, By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaks. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Remember, we just got through seeing in 1038, if you draw back and don't walk by faith, it won't please God. Here we see Enoch pleased God, and that leads up to verse 6. For without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, since we've already talked some about verse 2, I want to link that with verse 5. The things which are seen, the material world and universe, is made up of things you can't see. Energy power. And Enoch, verse 5, many, you know, many centuries ago, he got a hold of something that he learned how to do by faith that allowed him to be translated. Now, we read in the book of Acts that Philip was at one place preaching, and the next thing you know, he was translated and was found in another city many, many miles away. Long before uh, Star Trek, <laughs> God had transportation, translation, transporter. How? Now, now let's just stop a minute. How did that happen? If we believe the Bible, we just accept it by faith that Philip It'd be like, you know, Philip was uh, in Dallas, let's say, preaching and having a good meeting, and all at once, blip, Philip is gone. Where'd Philip go? <laughs> Next thing you know, Philip's in Houston. Houston. And meets some people that he needs to minister to just like that. He didn't drive there. He didn't fly there. How'd he get there? The Bible said translated. Translation. Translation. Now translation, <laughs> now I know you're, you're focused on this, but uh, why am I talking about this? Because the Bible says uh, the reason Enoch got translated was why? Because of his faith. He believed God. And pleased God. Uh, faith is not the boring subject some people think. We're talking about some very amazing things here. Translation. If you've got uh, something in Spanish and you want to translate it into English, then it's changed from Spanish words to English words. Now he just got through saying in verse 2, uh, excuse me, verse 3, that the things that are seen are made up of things that are not seen. So how did God translate Enoch and Philip? Well, he just, transla he just changed the seen into unseen and then back to seen. <laughs> Amazing. Hallelujah. Amazing. But even those who study physics... Uh, are learning about these things. They, they, they believe 
that uh, matter can be changed into energy and back to matter again? Well, God who created all of it knows how to do this. But here's the amazing thing. With Enoch, this amazing translation didn't just happen because God decided to do a spectacular thing. Enoch initiated this with his faith. Can you say, wow? wow. <laughs> Praise God and wow. Verse 5, what happened? By faith, somebody say by faith. By faith, by faith Enoch was what? Translated. How was he translated? By faith. by faith. Not just God decided to do it. It was Enoch's faith was the determining factor in his translation. Oh, friends, there's so much more to God than what many church-going people have thought. There is so much more to fellowship and faith and the manifestations of the Spirit. It can be and would be, will be, the most exciting type of life anybody could ever experience if we do the real thing, not some man's religious idea of it. Notice he said, uh, Enoch, by faith, was translated that he should not see death. Now this is a rare exception. Enoch didn't die. He never died. <laughs> and the Bible said they couldn't find his body because it wasn't there anymore. <laughs> well, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I have seen uh, a manifestation of this in my own uh, life and ministry. I have seen tumors and growths dematerialize. They were there and then they weren't. It's happened numerous times. Many times all over the world, but I'm, and a number of times in my own life and ministry. I've said, I remember a lady one time had a... Uh, uh, some kind of thing on her wrist. It protruded, I don't know, inch and a half or something. It was big, maybe two or three inches uh, around. And when I came, she was in a healing line. I came to lay hands on her and she held her, her arm up and immediately I saw it. And so I just put my hand on it. And you know, what did Jesus do to things that uh, he wanted to go away? He cursed them. <laughs> Remember that? He cursed the fig tree. And it dried up, withered from the roots up. I put my hand on it. I cursed that. I commanded it to, to dry up, to go away. I don't have to know how. Thank God. <laughs> all I got to do is I know, first of all now, both she and I would have to be persuaded it's not God's will for that to be there. Because if we're not persuaded of that, we're going to pull back. We're going to hesitate. We're, our, our, we're, our confidence is not going to be there. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. If you're still questioning the will of God, you're not in position for a miracle. You're not in faith. Faith is not there. But I could tell when she held it up, <laughs> I could see it in her eyes. She's ready for something to happen. I believe it. I put my hand, and I mean just faster than you can blink your eyes, I felt my hand flat against her wrist. I took my hand off. You almost blink your eyes. You think, well, it was there. She said, it's gone. It's gone. Glory to God. Glory to God. She jumped. She jumped. And, and I'm thinking, where did it go? It was there. I knew it was there. I touched it. She knew it was there. What happened? Well, Philip was here. <laughs> then he's not there. Can you see that? Yes. Enoch was there. Then you can't find him. Everything that's made, every physical thing, is made up of things you can't see. And God can easily change what he created from one form to, to another, from one place to another. Enoch, the Bible said, was translated that he should not see death. 
and he was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. For without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a what? A rewarder of those that diligent. In fact, the word diligent is a King James word. A lot of your other translations just simply say those that seek him. It's not a matter of putting forth all this effort. It's just if you're willing to seek him. He's a rewarder of those that seek him. As I was sharing on the testimony, I sensed that God is ready to do something for people. Hallelujah. We've got people that are, that are watching us from all over. And uh, uh, if there's a growth in your body, that's a plant our Heavenly Father didn't plant there. He didn't put there. If there's something superfluous, something that's uh, not necessary, that's uh, abnormal, an aberration, it shouldn't be there. And uh, we, the faith class here, will believe with you there that God touches just exactly what happened with that woman those years ago. And that's not the last time we've heard about this and seen this. Um, he's no respecter of persons and he never, ever changes. So if you've got something, you've got a, a growth, you've got a cyst on your body or in your body that you're aware of, I want you to just wherever you are, put your hand on it and, and just get ready to, to believe God that his power can dematerialize that. I mean, it's, it's atoms uh, that your body's consisted of. It's the power and energy of God that's even holding your body together to start with. It's so easy for him to make the thing that shouldn't be there just go away. So are you ready, saints? Are we going to believe with them, yes. class? So put your hand on it if there's something there, and, and I'm, going, I'm going to pray and believe with you, and the class is right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you as our healer. You are the Lord God who heals us, the Lord, our great physician. And with you, nothing is too difficult. Nothing is too hard. And we come in the mighty name of Jesus and by the power and authority of that name, every uh, knee must bow and, and every name that is named uh, must submit to that name above all names. And that's the name of any cyst or any growth or any cancer or anything superfluous that ought not be there. So we, everybody said out loud, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Growths, growths, tumors, tumors cysts, cysts, we speak to you, we speak to you command, you, command you, be dissolved, be, dissolved, be removed, be removed in Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank, you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be removed completely in the name of Jesus. Now, just lift your hands and start thanking him. Everybody, just start thanking him. Thank the Lord that nothing's too hard for him. This is so easy for him. Dematerialize, be dissolved, be removed completely in its entirety be normal and be right clear in Jesus name in Jesus name we just need to keep praising him for a moment He's work, God is working his spirit is working his spirit is doing good things yes hallelujah oh thank you father hallelujah by faith as though you were sitting in this chair, saint, I'm laying hands on you by faith. Be healed and be restored and be completely, completely whole in Jesus' holy name. Oh, thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, praise be to God. Glory be to God. Thank the Lord for healing you. Thank the Lord for being your healer and being your deliverer. 
Oh, thank you, Lord. Nothing's too hard for you. This is easy for you. Easy for you. So easy for you. And I thank you for doing it. I thank you for doing it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So just continue. Uh, hallelujah. Giving him thanks and praise. And I'm confident that a number of things have happened. Let us know so we can shout with you. Praise God. And in time to come, don't just tolerate something uh, for days and months and years. Uh, you can speak to it yourself. You don't have to wait till the next uh, faith class. You just uh, point to it, put your hand on it, speak to it, command it to change in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's power in that name. Can you say amen? amen. Verse 5 says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And uh, uh, you can be translated so that you don't die prematurely <laughs> and die wrong. Huh? Uh, you you can be moved. You may not necessarily need to move physically. That would only be as, as pertains to the plan of God. You know, we, we don't necessarily need to be just popping up all over the country for no reason. <laughs> There'd need to be some purpose in that and reason. Uh, but it's certainly possible that the same thing had happened to Philip could happen to people today. And it has. I've heard of accounts. Not, not too many, but I've heard of these kind of things. But uh, also, uh, spiritually and emotionally and physically and financially and, and family-wise, God can get you in a completely different place. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Than where you were before. And it doesn't have to take uh, all year for it to happen. Uh, Philip was here, boom, he's over there. Enoch was there, he was, he was gone. Now you see him, now you don't. And I believe we had that today with some tumors and growths and cysts. Then you saw him, now you don't. Can you say glory to God? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, friends, we're so excited uh, and we want to hear those testimonies because uh, we, we know things have happened. And until next time, said out loud, I live by faith, I walk by faith, I overcome the world by faith, I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God.